Welcome to Electra Online and now for something a little bit more complicated, a little bit more advanced, the standard wave equation, but we're only doing it in one dimension. And this is it. Okay, now what does that really mean? We have the partial second derivative of the wave function y with respect to position equals 1 over the velocity of the wave squared times the partial second derivative of the wave function y with respect to time. Hmm, what does that even mean? Well, that is what we call the standard wave equation. So we can do that in one or two or three dimensions, but it describes a, a wave moving out uh, with oscillatory motion either in one dimension, in planar dimension, or in triple, three, three dimensions. So we're just going to take the one dimension case. What that means is if you take the wave function, or what you think is a wave function, and of course by now we know this is indeed a wave function, if you plug that in, here, and then go to this process, and the left side equals the right side, we are indeed dealing with a wave equation. So that means that this will indeed be a wave equation, or an equation representing a wave. All right, let's go through the process and see if that's indeed the case. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take this, the first derivative with respect to y, uh, of y with respect to x of this function right here. So the, the partial of y, with respect to x is equal to. Now what that means when you take a partial derivative is that all of the variables are now considered to be constants except for x. x is the only variable now in this equation. Alright, so this is equal to a times the derivative of the cosine. Now the derivative of the sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is the negative sine. So that's minus the sine of kx minus omega t times the derivative of the angle. Now remember t is considered a constant because we're doing the partial with respect to x, so only x is a variable, so when we take the derivative of that, it would be times k. And so this then becomes minus ka times the sine of kx minus omega t. Now we go ahead and take the derivative again the second time, so now the partial, the second partial of y with respect to x is equal to, so take the derivative of this would be minus ka the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so we get the cosine of kx minus omega t. And of course, then we have to multiply times the derivative of the angle. This is a constant, so we just simply again get k. In other words, the second partial derivative of y with respect to x is equal to minus k squared a times the cosine of kx minus omega t. Now notice another way of looking at that is that a cosine kx minus omega t is back my original function, which is y. So in a way, what you can also say is that this is equal to minus k squared y for reference. All right, now we're going to do this again. We're going to take the partial derivative of y now with respect to the variable t. So now t becomes the variable, x will not be a constant. So let's do it over here because or else we'll run out of room. So the partial of the function y with respect to t is equal to, again like before, we're going to take the derivative of that, which is a. The derivative of the cosine is the minus sine of kx minus omega t. And now we have to take the derivative of the angle. And remember, x is a constant, t here is the variable. That's because we're doing a partial derivative. So we'll multiply this times the minus omega. All right, so then we go ahead this minus times this minus gives me a plus, so this is equal to a times omega times the sine of kx minus omega t. All right, now we do that a second time because we want the second derivative. So the second derivative of y with respect to time is equal to, we have a omega, those are constants. The derivative of the sine is the cosine of kx minus omega t, and then of course we multiply that times the derivative of the angle, which is a minus omega, that goes to the front, so this is equal to, uh, I guess can't forget my minus, minus a omega squared cosine of kx minus omega t. And remember that a times the cosine of this function, uh, or cosine of this angle I should say, is of course my original function y, so this is equal to minus omega squared y. All right, and so let's plug in, that's the second derivative of y with respect to t. 
Okay, now, if we plug those things in here, do we get an equality? Meaning, does the left side equal the right side? So let's try that. So instead of this, we're going to plug in this. So now we have minus k squared y is equal to 1 over v squared times this, and of course this is equal to this, which is uh, minus omega squared times y. All right, right away I can see that the minus cancels out, so that's gone. And we have a y on both sides that cancels out. So now we're left with k squared is equal to 1 over v squared times omega squared. And of course the big question is, is that indeed true? If it's true, then this is indeed a proper wave equation. All right, so now we need some, um, hmm, some conversions. We can say that k being the wave number is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So I can say that 2 pi over lambda quantity squared is equal to 1 over v squared. Now v, we could write that as the product of the frequency times the wavelength. So let's do that. So that's equal to um, uh, frequency times the wavelength, because velocity equals frequency times wavelength. And of course, since velocity is squared, we have to square those times omega squared. Okay, well, maybe instead of writing omega squared, I'm going to write what omega is equal to. Remember that omega is equal to 2 pi f, so let's write that. So instead of omega, I'm going to write 2 pi squared and f squared. Okay, now I think we're starting to see that there's a lot of similarity here. I definitely have a 2 pi squared on the left side and a 2 pi squared on the right side, so that cancels out. So that becomes a 1, that becomes a 1. I have an f squared here and I have an f squared there. That cancels out, that cancels out. What I'm left with now is a 1 over lambda squared equals 1 over lambda squared, which, of course, those two are equal. And so what I've just shown, by using my standard wave equation, I've proven that this form of the traveling wave on a string is indeed a proper equation for a wave because the left side equals the right side. And that's what these wave equations are good for. All right. That's how you do that.